One of the biggest changes on the iPhone 14 is the removal of physical SIM cards. Instead, iPhone 14 models in the US use something called eSIMs, which are virtual embedded SIM cards. They're software-based versions of the physical SIM cards that have been used in phones for years. Apple's been gradually moving towards this change for a while now. It supported eSIMs going back to 2018's iPhone XS, XS Max, and XR, as well as on its recent cellular iPads and Apple Watches. The iPhone 11, 12, and 13 support both eSIMs and physical SIM cards. But this is the first time an iPhone has completely ditched physical SIM cards for eSIMs. Here's what that means for iPhones and whether other phone makers could someday make the switch too. Apple shared the update about switching fully to eSIMs during its iPhone 14 launch event in September. With eSIM, you can quickly transfer an existing cellular plan or get a new cellular plan, all digitally. eSIMs work pretty much identically to regular SIM cards. They let you connect to a compatible wireless carrier, and all three major U.S. carriers support eSIM. You're still going to be able to connect to a 4G or 5G network. You're still going to be able to have all the access that you otherwise would get with a physical SIM card. That's not going to change with this device. That's not going to change if your future phones have eSIM. Apple says eSIMs are more secure since someone can't remove the SIM card if your phone gets stolen. You can also store multiple eSIMs on the same device, meaning you can have more than one cellular plan and phone number on that device. Another perk with eSIMs is that you can try out a different carrier's network alongside your existing one if you're thinking about switching. T-Mobile, for example, offers a trial program that lets you use their network for three months for free alongside your existing carrier so you can see if maybe their service is better for you. Another advantage could be that by removing the physical SIM card, you will have more space inside these small devices to potentially add other additional features. It's unclear what the removal will add for the iPhone 14, but by taking out these physical components, in theory, you should have more space going forward. On the other hand, one of the downsides could be if you break or lose your device and need to go back to an older phone, you may have to do a little bit more work. Before you could take your physical SIM card out of whatever device you're using, plop it in to a new device and you're good to go. With eSIM, is that going to be as simple as downloading software and just downloading your carrier's app? Or are you gonna to have to go through a process, logging in, finding certain credentials, etc.? In the U.S., carriers including Verizon, AT&T, T-Mobile, Boost Mobile, and Mint Mobile all support eSIM. Internationally, carrier support varies by country. In theory, eSIMs should make using your phone overseas a lot easier. Another possible benefit is you're traveling. Instead of having to go find a kiosk to get a SIM card, you might be able to just open up the App Store, find a local, regional cell phone provider, and download an app and go through that process there to get a SIM card. But as for which carriers in which countries, again, that will vary based on where you're going. Apple isn't the only company that uses eSIMs. Other phones that use virtual SIM cards include Samsung's latest Galaxy phones, the newest Pixel phones, and the Motorola Razr. Most of these recent devices support both eSIMs as well as physical SIM cards. But it's likely companies will take Apple's lead and switch to supporting only eSIMs feels that when Apple does something like this, they did this before with headphone jacks, they took that out. Now it's so hard to find, especially on the higher tier devices, headphone jacks there. This certainly has those type of vibes where now that physical SIM cards are gone on iPhones, they'll probably be gone on other devices too. Apple's move to eSIMs also seems to fit into its overall messaging about giving customers more choice and flexibility. Apple has long championed, at least publicly, the idea of users taking control when it comes to other people having access to their software. They talk about privacy a lot. They talk about removing control from other companies who want ads or data on you. By giving more consumer choice here, it could allow Apple to continue that messaging and expand it to the carrier experience and how you connect to various networks. How do you feel about the switch to eSIMs? Let us know in the comments and don't forget to hit like and subscribe for more content from CNET.